In today's video, I'm going to show you how to create a swipe gallery app for Android phones. A swipe gallery is simply a photo gallery with a bunch of pictures in there where you'll be able to swipe backwards and forwards between the pictures. We're going to be using these five pictures today. It's going to be quite a simple app, just swiping your finger across the screen will switch between photos. So let's head over to Flash and get started on making this app. We're going to be using a template today under the Air for Android section. We're going to let Flash do most of the work and create a lot of the app for us. There's our swipe gallery template, so just click on OK on the swipe gallery. You can see that our swipe gallery is already half created by Flash. If we were to load this into our phone right now, these four photos would be in the gallery and you'd be able to swipe between each of those four photos. Each one would appear one at a time. This is the main section of what appears on your phone screen. Um, you can see we've got an exit button also on the home screen. That only appears when we press our option button on our phone. This will pop up and then we have the option there to exit our app. Uh, to begin with, we might get rid of these red instructions. Okay, it just says if we need to edit the code or the action script to just go to the actions panel, which is up there. We can press F9 to bring that up. So we don't need those red instructions, so let's just click on the instructions layer and hit the little trash can to delete it. Okay, you can see we've got a few other layers here. As I said before, we've got the actions layer, which has our action script, so the code behind the button. We don't really need to touch that because it Flash has written it for us and it works so there's no need to change it. The menu, okay, all the menu is is that little grey exit button just here. So you can make that appear and disappear by toggling the visibility. For now, let's get rid of that. I'm not going to delete it but just make it invisible by hitting underneath that little eye, hit the little dot. Okay, if you need to come back just press that little red cross and it comes back. But for now, let's make that exit section disappear because this is pretty much what we're going to see on our phone screen, this big black gap. So we might put a title in there in a moment. This third layer is the gallery items. That's all the photos here. At the moment, it's one big picture. To edit those, we're going to need to double click on them and that breaks it down where we can start to edit them individually. We'll do that in just a moment. Remember, once you've double clicked on them, you're in a brand new window. You're editing just that image holder section. If you want to go back to scene one and be able to edit everything else, make sure you click back on scene one. And then we've got our background layer, which is just this black background. I think it looks pretty good, so let's just stick with that. I'm also going to unlock it for a moment. And as I said, I want to put a little title just in here. So that can be the first thing we do. So let's grab our text tool. You've got your properties up here if you'd like to change your font or your size or whatever. I recommend picking a cool looking font and writing my photo gallery. I'm just going to change the colours a little bit to make it a bit more exciting. <coughs> Using my black arrow I will be able to move that around. Use your arrow keys to nudge it. I think that's a cool little title now. That looks pretty good. I'm going to lock that background back into place because I'm not going to touch that anymore. Same with the menu, actually. We don't need to touch that. Okay, so I'm just going to lock it. And I might bring its visibility back now. Okay, so make sure you've got its visibility back before you finish up. Now the last bit is to change these four pictures that Flash has put in there and bring in our own photos. So what we need to do is go to our library over here on the right hand side and we're going to import those five photos to the library. So you do that by going to your file menu, going down to import and we're just going to import to library. Just navigate through until you find the swipe gallery folder and find those five pictures we were looking at earlier on in the tutorial. You can highlight them all at once and click open. A dialog box will appear, don't worry about what it says, just click on OK and you'll see in your library those five pictures have now appeared. You can make it a little bit bigger if you want to see the thumbnail view of it. So what we need to do is replace these existing pictures with these photos. So as I said before, we need to actually double click on this image holder to get into a side it and edit these one by one. 
For the first step, we need to remove the number one section and bring in the number one photo. Now I want to get that photo exactly where the number one picture is here. So before I delete it, I'm going to get my rulers from my view menu up and drag a few of these rulers onto the page to show exactly where that picture is lined up. You want the top and you want the left hand side. So now it should be right to just delete that picture. And scroll down and delete the number one as well. And you can drag your first picture onto your stage. Try and get it perfectly in line with where it was a moment ago. If you want to be fussy you can zoom in and just check the top of that. Let's see how it's looking with our guides here. So I can see that my picture is a little bit outside the guide, so I'm going to use my arrow keys to nudge it around until I get it into place. That looks like it fits perfectly into where picture 1 was. You can do the same for 2, 3 and 4 now. So I'm going to use my rulers, just drag them onto the stage. Oops, I think I just missed the edge of that then. There we go. Delete number two. And it's possible to drag the second picture in now. Oops. Make sure it lines up nicely in that top left hand corner. Okay, that looks good. Across to the third one now. I'm going to drag your ruler across first, delete the third picture, delete the third number, and bring in your third photo. I'm going to use your arrow keys to just nudge it around to get it perfect. And last of all, number four here, bring your ruler on first. Once it's in position, delete number four. And let's bring the fourth photo onto our stage. Just line that up nicely. Okay, if I zoom out now, we should see all four photos on our stage. Remember, I said we had a fifth photo as well. We need to get that into our page, into our app, sorry. So what we're going to do, there's probably numerous ways you could do this, because we want to get the same gap between each photo exactly the same. These four photos already have the exact same gap. We need to get it on the end here as well. So to work that out, I'm just going to zoom in a bit, go to my last photo here. I'm going to drag another ruler onto the page, onto this edge of the photo. And I'm going to draw a little rectangle. Make sure there's no stroke, just a fill color inside that area. Using the free transform tool, I'm going to click on that and stretch it out so it snaps onto those rulers. That rectangle is now the size of the gap between each photo. So I can move that rectangle over to the last photo here. Oops. Let me just scroll across a bit. Zooming in, I'm just going to get that to line up with that photo. I'm able to bring a ruler across. Just drop it on the edge of that rectangle. That's close enough. Now if I zoom out, we've got a little gap here and that shows where I can put my next photo. So I'm going to bring photo number five onto the page. I might zoom out a little bit and just move it into place in that corner there. I can delete that little pink guide when I'm done. So there's all five photos looking pretty good in our app. We've all got the same size gap between them. They look perfectly in line with one another. That's going to make our app look so much neater and so much tidier. It'll make it a lot more professional. Okay, so that's our app created there. So I can go back to scene one now. We can get out of the image holder section. Go back to scene one. And last of all, I think I might change one tiny bit of code in our actions here. So let's go to our actions layer. Go to our actions box up here. If you can't see this actions box, you can just go to your window menu and select actions or just press F9. Now the only thing we need to change is right near the top when it talks about the current number of gallery items. 
Okay, we start on gallery item number one, and we don't have four items, we've actually got five items now. So change that number four to a number five. So the total gallery items is five. The rest of the code should be fine, it should work. So you don't have to worry about changing any more of the code. So once your phone app looks pretty much like mine, we're good to save it up first of all. So let's go file and save as. Put that into your swipe gallery folder, give it a name, swipe gallery. Best if you don't leave spaces, just make it all one word and click on save. Okay, that hasn't published it ready for our phone just yet, but it has saved our work so we don't lose it. We can always come back and edit this if we need to. So what we need to do to publish it to our phone is go up to our properties box on the right hand side here and go to our publish settings. There's a few things we need to do under the F Android pub, uh, player settings. Hit that little spanner up there next to F Android and this dialog box will appear. The output file, I want you to change the name to swipegallery.apk. Make sure again you've got no spaces in the file name. Your app name Give it a name for your app. I'm just going to call it Swipe Gallery. Again, no spaces. I'm not sure why, but when I saved it originally with spaces in the name, my app didn't work. By getting rid of the space, it worked. So let's just stick with no spaces. And if you want, you can change your app ID to Swipe Gallery as well. That's that tab done. Let's go to the Deployment tab. You'll need to create yourself a certificate. Okay, so write in your name. You don't have to worry about organization units or names. If you want, you can put in the country. It's AU for Australia. And just come up with a password so no one else can use your certificate. It might be as simple as 1234. Whatever you want to put, just put in a password there. And just browse because you're going to save this digital certificate into your document somewhere. I'm just going to call it certificate. And click save. And click OK. And you'll see a box. Oops. It does say all fields must be filled out. So it looks like we do have to come up with an organization name. I'm just going to put CSHS for Caloundra State High School. And click on OK one more time. And the box will tell us that we have saved our certificate and it's been created. Remember to put your password back in there so we can use this digital certificate. Make sure these two bottom boxes are checked down the bottom. It's going to install our application on the connected Android device. I have got my Android phone connected to the computer, so it's going to save it onto that. And I also want it to launch the application as soon as it's copied over, so I can test it out and see if it works. One last trick, one nice little feature, is to have some icons for your app. So when you open it up on the phone, you've got a little icon you can click on. You can have three different sizes. If you want, you can make three different sized icons in Fireworks or Photoshop. Um, I'm just going to stick with a 72 by 72 icon. I previously made one. It's in my Assets folder. There it is there, size 72. I've got the other two sizes if you want to include them as well. Okay, so I'm just going to click on OK on that. Oops, we do have permissions up here as well. You don't have to worry about them. So just click on OK. And we are ready to publish. Okay, I haven't got the appropriate software installed to publish this yet, so I'm going to get an error message when I hit publish. But that pretty much just publishes it to your phone. There's my error message. Eventually it will say that the APK package was successfully created and it comes up with some warning. Don't have to worry about that. So click OK. Then you can just head over to your phone and test out your app. That's how we create a simple swipe gallery.